prayed immediately. And the first thing that she did was to praise God. How many times do we forget to praise God? The meeting place where they were, the president or the priest, was furious because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. He said to the people, to the congregation, six days have been defined as work days. Come on one of the six if you want to be healed but not on the seventh, the Sabbath. There's always a critic in the crowd. What do you mean healing? Healing somebody on the Sabbath. This is a day of rest. This is a day of worship. If you wanted to be healed, why didn't you come on Saturday or Friday? Jesus spoke back to it. I like it when Jesus speaks back to it. He said, you frauds, every Sabbath, every one of you regularly unties your cow or your donkey from his stalls and leads it out for water and think nothing about it. So why isn't it all right for me to untie this daughter of Abraham and lead her from the stall where Satan has had her tied these 18 years? He's trying to put things in perspective that when God works, he's not limited to a specific day of the week. Some of us today may feel imprisoned. Maybe there's some hurt in your life or some sin in your life that, that you've tried to keep hidden from every, everyone. Sinful things which you just can't seem to get rid of. You just can't seem to stop them. You just can't do it on your own. It's a major dilemma for us. We may not be crippled in the sense of physically, but we can know the power of the Lord through deliverance and transformation in our hearts and in our lives. It changes us. We can relate because sometimes we find ourselves in situations that feel as though they are trapping us. They have imprisoned us. They have a hold on us that we can't get away from. Jesus is saying, I've come to deliver you from those things. As we look at her dilemma, her plight, as we look at her situation, he explains it in the scripture. He says, she was twisted and bent over. Her situation was distracting to other people. It was distracting for her in her life. She couldn't do the things that other people could do. She couldn't uh, uh, walk in ways that other people walked and may not even have been able to go to places where other people went. So this morning, what we have to investigate in our hearts and in our lives is to look at ourselves and say, what is distracting me from following Christ fully? What is distracting me from being all that I can be through Jesus Christ? What is it that we're hanging on to and dragging around with? Is it our past? Is it something that happened? Is it, is it an addiction? Is it something that we face each and every day and we're literally shackled or chained within our spirit and heart from keeping and having peace, hope, and freedom in our hearts? Is it depression? Is it unforgiveness? Is it hatred? What is it that has us, has us entangled? What we also have to understand is that the scripture is telling us about the delivering power of the Lord. She had been afflicted for 18 years. It wasn't a place where you've been, you've been this way for 18 years, just go ahead and live your life. It's the best it's going to be. 
Don't we feel defeated sometimes and feel that same way? This is, this is all there is. It's the best that it's going to be. But Jesus was bringing her the delivering power. How long have you been struggling with a particular issue in your life? No one else may know about it. But it's something that, that ties up your heart. It's something that just is on your mind continually. How long will you go without seeking God's deliverance for that in your life? He can deliver us. Many times we try to do it on our own. Oh, I'll forgive. Oh, I'll change this about my life. And we find ourselves in just a few days, maybe a week, maybe a month, we find ourselves at a place of falling right back in to the things that have entangled our hearts because we haven't been set free from them. We've just covered them over to make us feel better. How long will we go down that road that you know is not right and yet you can't let go of it? There's truth. We go down that road and, and we try in our own strength and we try to let go of it and we find ourselves back in that same place. Time and time again. I'm here to say to us that we can have deliverance from those things that bind you. What happens to us? Is the more that we put off listening to the Lord, as Joe's song said, the more that we say, oh, well, tomorrow I'll take care of it. The more that we harbor those things in our heart, we say, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it later. When the whole time, the Lord's just saying, give it to me. Let it go. Release it. If we don't, the scripture says that we can become hard-hearted and lose sight of hearing from the voice of the Lord, our conscience, our spirit. When we hold on to those things, we, we, we begin to become hard of hearing to what the Lord is trying to say to us. In the scripture, in, in the psalmist wrote these words, but who can discern their own errors? Who can discern their own mistakes? He's saying to the Lord, forgive my hidden faults. Those things that I don't even realize. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then he gives a promise. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. It will all be forgiven. You know, there are some times that we can continue to do things for so long that we convince ourselves in our minds that it's become right. The truth is, unless it's from God's word, that's the truth. And we measure what we do and how we live our lives by God's word. It's not my opinion of how things should be. It's not, well, it's okay for you and not okay for me. It's a matter of searching God's word and coming to the place and determining what the word says as to how we should live our lives and what is right and what is wrong. You remember your children? Your children, uh, when they were, were small and you would catch them in an, an act of doing something wrong, you'd go up and say, oh, you can't do that's wrong, and the tears begin to flow. They are so sorry because, because you had to chastise them. As they begin to grow, they begin to become numb to the things that used to make them cry. Because you see 
we begin to learn to manipulate our lives. We come to a place where telling a lie is, is not a big deal anymore. Stretching the truth is uh, just part of life. I want us to know that we can do things in our lives and continue to do them when the Lord, when we first do those things and the Lord convicts us within our spirit and through the word, we have remorse for that. But the more that we do it, the more often it occurs in our lives, the more that it becomes easy to do and to justify in our minds. That's why the Lord needs control of our minds. The delivering power of the Lord, she knew there was nothing that she could do about her situation. We have to come to that place and understand that there's nothing that we can personally do about the situation and that we need the Lord to change our hearts, change our minds. She was imprisoned by her body. Many times there are things going on in our lives that we don't want anybody to know. We think that no one knows because we put on our church face. We come in and we look good and we hug and we shake hands and how was your week and we do all the cordial things but at the same time on the inside there are things that are eating us up. There are hurts and pains and maybe even a sin in our lives that need to be rectified, but, but we just keep on putting on the face. The thing that we need to understand is that Jesus, God, knows every detail. There's nothing that can be hidden from him. You can hide it from your family. You can hide it from your spouse. You can hide it from the church, but nothing is hidden from God. And that should hold us more accountable. So the good news is that, that she was seeking the delivering power of the Lord, but then in the scripture, God provides the deliverance. It wasn't just something that was to be said, but it was something that actually happened. She fell at his feet. She came expecting, she came hopeful, she came with much faith that she needed deliverance and I don't know whether she had seen Jesus in another town, she had heard of Jesus, whatever drew her to that point, she came expecting. We too need to understand that we need to come to him expecting an experience of freedom and deliverance from whatever we're facing. Doesn't mean the situation's going to change, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean that life's going to be all rosy and, and, and wonderful. But it means that you will be able to make it through Jesus. He will give you strength. And as she fell at the feet of Jesus, she heard the words of Jesus. Woman, you're free. I believe it spoke to her heart. She knew that it was more than just saying words before her. She understood that she was going to be freed from this crippling disease. She was going to be freed in her heart and in her spirit by the words that he spoke. And Jesus tells us in John 8, Verily I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Hello, listen again. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You may think you are in control, but that sinful nature, that sinful thing has control over you. I've told people many, many times, they say, oh, well, you know, such and such, uh, uh, I, I'm not addicted to it. Then set it aside for a month. You'll find whether those cravings are there. 
You'll find whether you're being drawn to it. You'll find whether there's a deep hunger for that thing. And if so, then that means you are a slave to whatever that is. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family. But listen, but a son belongs to it forever. So, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. There's no doubt. There's no questioning. If the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You say, well, pastor, you know, that sin is, is so heavy and so gets such a hold on us. Well, listen to Romans. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive in God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in this mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Purge that lifestyle. Change that heart. For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under the law, but you are under the wonderful grace of Jesus. What a joy, what a privilege. I saw this quote and it resonated with my heart. I believe in our society we've cheapened grace. And grace is not there just to cover up your sins, just to hide them from everyone. Grace is there to deliver you from the sin that is in your life. Not to cover it, not to hide it, but to change and transform that sinful way of life. 2 Timothy 4.18 says, the Lord will rescue me from every evil attack. Anybody ever been under attack? The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and will bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Things are not going to remain the same. This is just a journey that we're on. And he will see us through even when evil is trying to overtake us. He will safely lead us to that eternal home. She fell at his feet, she heard his words, and then she felt his touch. She felt his touch. When Jesus touches you, when Jesus changes your life, you'll never be the same. Remember the old Bill Gaither song, Shackled by a Heavy Burden, Neath a Load of Guilt and Shame. Oh, but then the hand of Jesus touched me. And now I am no longer the same. The touch of Jesus on our hearts will change us. And she received his deliverance as he touched her and healed her. He laid his hands on her and suddenly she was standing straight and tall. That burden, that difficulty that we face in our lives that sometimes spiritually have us bent over or just life's pressures keep us bent over or looking down. That depression, that hurt, whatever it may be. You see, it takes effort to look up. And the Lord is saying to us, stand straight and tall and know that I am God. She was touched and she immediately began to give praise to God. It says that when she stood straight and tall, she was giving glory to God. It wasn't about looking at her legs or her feet or her hips or her back. It was that she realized that she had had a touch from the master and was willing to praise him. God provides deliverance still today for whatever we're facing. He provides it, but we have to be willing to receive it. 
He breaks those chains that uh, bind us. But we have to be willing to give them to him and surrender those things. I believe some here today have been struggling with issues and within your heart and spirit, you've been bound. You've been shackled. There may be things that you've been dealing with in your life for months or years that no one really knows about. But deep within your soul, you're in a desperate condition. Maybe a step away from giving up on the Lord and life. He wants to deliver us when we come to him. The good news is this. As we look at the scripture... All those the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. That's the Lord. It's not, well, let me check you out. Let me see if you're okay, and and maybe I'll receive you. Let me see if everything's resolved in your life and and you're living the the perfect life and, and I'll see if I'll receive you. No, the scripture says that he will never push us away no matter what our faults and our failures have been. He then begins to transform us and change us into being more like him. Are you holding on to something today? Is there something in your life that you've been harboring in the back of your mind and you just can't let it go? I'm challenging us today to give it to Jesus. Oh, you say, well, pastor, I I just don't know that I can. It starts with a step. And you may have to give it again in the morning. But you're determined within your heart and within your life to be set free from whatever is holding you captive. He longs to set us free with a life of hope, with a life of peace, with a plan direction for our lives. All he asks is that we turn our eyes toward him, that we turn our hearts to him. Quit looking at the things of this world. Quit looking at the things around us. Quit making judgments on our own. Quit trying to fix it ourselves and surrender my life situation to him. Would you just bow your heads? Kelly's going to sing. And we're going to have a closing prayer in just a moment. But as a public confession today, maybe you want to bring to this altar or to the front pew or to where you're sitting that thing that has held you captive and give it to the Lord today. Would you be obedient as Kelly sings and as we prepare to close in prayer? Are you willing to get rid of those things?
Father, we come to you this morning realizing that life is not fair. Understanding that we're going to have hurts, we're going to have difficulties. There are going to be relationship issues. There may be things that we're harboring within our hearts that we need to release to you. And you promise that whatever we give to you, that you will receive it. You will help us. You will move in our hearts and lives. Lord, you desire us to be a people who live in freedom. Freedom from the sins of this world. Freedom in our spirit to worship, to love, and to walk with you on a daily basis. But Lord, you require each of us to be responsible, to admit our faults, our failures to you. seek you in our lives. Help us, Lord, on this day to understand that you can set the captive free. Maybe there's someone in our families who need that freedom. Help us, Lord, to witness to them, love them, show them you through our lives. Thank you, Lord, for this day, for this time. And may we leave rejoicing that we serve a Savior who loves us. We pray these things in the loving, healing, forgiving, transforming name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. God bless you today.